British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is facing even more growing political pressure to stop selling weapons to Israel after seven aid workers, including three British nationals, were killed by an Israeli air attack on Gaza. It comes as US President Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, are due to have their first direct talks since the strike. But despite tensions over the conduct of the war, the US government is continuing to supply arms to its ally. Now, I'd like to bring in former British Army officer Colonel Richard Kemp uh, to ask him his opinion of what happened, of course, over there uh, in Gaza when those aid workers were killed. Uh, Colonel Richard, very, very warm welcome. Thanks for joining us here at the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. I've been listening to a lot of opinions on this over the course of the last 24 hours or so. Um, some people asking for Britain to stop supplying arms to Israel. My understanding is that Britain only supplies about 0.02% of, of Israel's arms, and many of those are components of, of, of bigger pieces of kit, if you like. Um, I've heard also Israeli um, spokesmen saying that, you know, we will go it alone if we have to. If we get the rug pulled by the international community, we are still going to go after Hamas because that's what we have to do. Yeah, on those uh, weapons um, or the arms, shall we say, sales from Britain to Israel, Britain doesn't supply any arms to Israel, any weapons to Israel. What it does supply is some minor components, maybe important components, but a small number of components for some of Israel's, Israel's military equipment, many of which actually are not used by Israel. They, they, they form parts of weapons that are exported by Israel to other countries. Yeah. So the effect of uh, a British arms embargo on Israel would be absolutely zero, in reality zero, pretty much. Uh, it would obviously be a performative gesture. Uh, it would be intended to damage Israel's uh, pr prosecution of this war. On the other hand, uh, Israel supplies some very significant weaponry to Britain, something like, I think it's 2.7% or something of Britain's total arms imports. And it does include things like drones, it includes uh, anti-armor missiles, it includes uh, tank protection systems, things like that, some very important equipment. So if the, Israel were to reciprocate, we'd be on, without a doubt, on the losing side of that. Right. Uh, as far as what happened in Gaza is concerned with the world's central kitchen, none of us know is, is, at present. There's an investigation going on, uh, and no doubt we'll find out how this terrible, terrible incident came about. Almost certainly it was a catastrophic mistake as a result, perhaps, of human error, of procedural errors, of bad communications, lack of coordination, those sort of areas, I would have thought. Um, but, but tragic nevertheless. Unfortunately, these things happen all the time in war. All you've got to do is think back. I mean, President Biden has said how outraged he is by this action by Israel. It's tragic, but it's not, it's not something I don't think you should be calling outrageous. I'm sure it wouldn't have been deliberate. We'll see. I doubt it. Um, but all you have to do is think back to 2021 when President Biden's forces were withdrawing from Kabul and they struck, uh, there was a drone strike against what they thought was a terrorist group, but it was in fact a, an, an aid worker mm. and, and nine members of his family, including seven children. This is not um, an exceptional uh, incident, unfortunately. It's, 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 it's due to the kind of chaos, pressure, confusion, human error that you get in, in war. It's, it's, yeah. it's tragic, but it's reality. Well, once again, we're also being held up um, here as Israel uh, to a completely different standard. I mean, as far as I understand it, the US gives plenty of military aid to Saudi Arabia. Um, they have um, many, many military installations there. They help to train the Saudi Arabian pilots that are dropping bombs on Yemen. Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of instances, if you wanted to find them, uh, of bombings that went wrong, bombings that killed civilians, uh, orders that killed civilians, uh, possibly with American weapons. I don't see Joe Biden, you know, having to go at America for that. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and and he, he gave the orders. In what, there was one case when, when he was, admittedly was vice president in 2015 when the US carried out a series of airstrikes against a hospital in Kunduz yeah. in Afghanistan, as a result of which something like 42 people were killed and around 30 or more wounded. Terrible, terrible incident, mm -hmm. but... It was a tragic accident. It's what happens in war. And, of course, Britain is not without uh, these sort of things happening. And, and it's, it's very similar, actually. The kind of attack on the world's central kitchen is, is not dissimilar to a sort of blue-on-blue -blue attack. And I personally have been involved in an, an, a number of blue-on-blue -blue attacks mm. in different theatres. 
And, and no one will ever accuse, I hope anyway, no one will ever accuse British or American troops of deliberately shooting at their own side. Mm. It's what happens, unfortunately. And the, the Israelis will, will undoubtedly learn from it. They will no doubt change their procedures. They'll try and prevent this happening again. But it will happen again. It'll happen time and time again, not yeah. just in this war, but in all other wars. It's, it's an unfortunate function when people decide to go to war. Right. And we shouldn't forget, we shouldn't forget for a moment that every death, every wound, everyone that's going hungry in this conflict in Gaza is down to Hamas. Hamas started the war with a massacre on the 7th of October. They kidnapped dozens of Israelis and are still holding many of them, over 100 hostage in Gaza now, where they're being abused, tortured and sexually mistreated. Um, but it's, it's, it, without that, without that attack, none of this will be happening. So, OK, every side, particularly, particularly obviously the Israelis, get, being that they're a, a democratically accountable on forces are responsible for upholding the laws of war. They must do that. Right. Um, but but despite that, the, the culpability here, the real culpability is with Hamas. Exactly right. And I mean, in terms of the sort of intelligence relationship between the UK and Israel and the US and Israel, um, is that in any way in danger at the moment? Because, of course, one of the things that, that we have with Israel and, and solidarity is a common enemy uh, being Hamas, you know, and being Islamic fundamentalist terrorism, which we've all suffered from in one way, shape or form. So, I mean, because of the way politically things are happening, would you say that there's a danger that our intelligence relationship, if you want, or what we share with each other is in some kind of jeopardy? Britain and Israel are two of the closest intelligence partners of any two countries in the world. And Britain gains enormous benefit from that relationship. So does Israel. But Britain, I would say, is the net beneficiary, particularly in relation to Islamist terrorism. Mm. Uh, I used to work in the intelligence world a few years back, and I could give you personal, I could personally tell you details of ways in which British lives were saved on numerous occasions, whether it be in Afghanistan, Iraq, here, here in Britain or elsewhere in the world, as a direct result of Israeli intelligence. Mm. That goes for pretty much every other country. That relationship is strong. I, I, I believe, knowing, knowing the Israeli intelligence world, as well as the British intelligence mm. world, I believe even if there's a severe breakdown in relations between Britain and Israel, Israel will still provide vital intelligence to Britain, irrespective of what's happening on the political scene. They, they, they consider it more important, I think, to help Britain to save the lives of British citizens than what's happening on the other side. So I'm not directly concerned now with, uh, with a loss of that relationship. I, th I think it will be maintained. Yes. And I mean, I was listening, as I say, earlier on today uh, on Talk TV to an Israeli government spokesman who talked about now, the toll of, of, of Israeli soldiers is, is up to about 600 uh, deaths um, in the Israeli Defence Force. But when told that, you know, the public opinion was turning against him, he said, well, it's not in Israel. Because we hear an awful lot, don't we, of people saying this is all down to Netanyahu. You know, it's his politics that have caused all of this trouble because he has invited the extremists into his government. I mean, I don't particularly go along with that view. And I don't think it should change anything that Britain does. But what do you make of that? No, I mean, I've spent virtually all of the last six months since the 9th of October inside Israel. Um, there, there is immense unity in Israel. The vast majority of the population know and support the necessity for this war. They know that it, their survival depends on the defeat of Hamas. And then, uh, undoubtedly, it will become necessary also to fight Hezbollah at some point. I don't know when exactly. But there is tremendous unity in Israel. Like, like most other democracies, Israel is a divided country. There are people who hate Netanyahu, there are people that love Netanyahu. But right now, the vast majority are right behind him in this war. Um, and, and I, you know, we've, we have actually seen in recent days, we've seen some even slightly violent protests going on in Israel against the government. But it's, it's marginal, I think. It's a small number of people, the sort you'd expect to find in any democracy, really. And I think that um, the, the, uh, the, 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 the unity of this government is, is probably pretty much unchallenged um, in any significant way. And, and, and interestingly, actually, one, one thing that your, your viewers and listeners may not 
probably appreciate is that the Israeli Arabs who live inside Israel, I'm not talking about in the West Bank or Gaza, of course, but the Israeli Arabs, the, the, the strength of support for the state of Israel and for this war has gone up enormously since the 7th of October. So it's not just the Jews in Israel, it's, it's also the Arabs who are behind what Israel is trying to do here. Absolutely right. Colonel Richard Kemp, thank you so much for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Uh, that's the latest there coming in from former British Army Commander Colonel Richard Kemp.